If it's part of a band recording, the piano would end up in the booth over here. Um, so we actually built this booth uh, towards the end of the, the lockdown a couple of years ago. So that's its kind of default position where we're doing like band tracking. We'd have drums in here, piano in the booth, maybe the bass player in the control room and like a guitarist across in the other booth. And mics wise, on the front, it's basically a pair of condensers of some kind. You can't really hear it in here, but on mic, the kind of the hiss of the hammers moving and, and striking gives you this kind of, I don't know, it's a very tactile noise, which on its own can be too much, but those mics compressed and in the blend are really, really useful. So I would generally use the Sherps for them. So something condenserish, not too bright on the front. I'd rather EQ in the top end and not have a mic give me too much of that sharpness kind of straight away. Um, and then on the back, the humble 57s are the core of the sound. I, I'm sure I could experiment with other dynamic mics as well, but I've just always got on so well with the 57s. Often, if it is a band recording, to be honest, and it's more in the context of a, of a bigger arrangement, then these three mics are all you need in the booth. And I, I sometimes don't use the front mic or just put the periscope on the front just as another option. But the 257s basically give you that kind of glassy, thinner, not too rich and warm kind of like you get from the Sherps. So it's a useful, it's a different color. Again, if you're in a band track with bass um, and drums, then you kind of don't want all of that low end filling up the space. You just want to hear the clarity um, and attack of the piano, which is what these give us in spades. And then Placid Audio Copperphone in the middle which is just all about mid-range kind of boxiness or clarity or whatever you want to call it really that you can just bring up and down on a fader just to taste. Um, so I tend to blend a bit of that in. And again, if it's in a bigger arrangement, then a little bit of that gives you that same kind of, um, kind of glassy attack is the only way I can describe it really. You get a very different sound on the back of the piano from the front. It's less direct with the hammers. It's almost, again, sounds like a built-in compressor um, in terms of what it does to the transient attack of the hammer strike. Um, and that's what I love about that, you know, boosting the top end to hear the clarity on those, but with the softening of the fact that you're micing the back of the piano instead of the front is really useful. And that's generally all I'll do, but then I will have the periscope mic or sometimes a pair of coals in the room if it's something that really wants to hear the room a bit more. And the, the Sherps are going through the distressors, kind of six to one, hitting somewhere between five and 10 dB of compression. And I generally go five attack, five release, which gives you that kind of spongy sound that I really love. Um, and the, the distortion, um, settings on the distress are quite useful as well. The disc two and disc three, Disc three is kind of like a, a softer top end, more sort of tapey sound, which again, I would tend to use on these. Um, the 57s, depends what I'm feeling like, what they go through today, we put them through the Chandler Zener, just not hitting too hard and the curve bender for some EQ. Um, and the copper phone goes through whatever, again, I feel like on the day, either a retro 176 or the VAT crack or something, just to give it a little bit of tone and character as well on top of what it's already got, so.
Yeah, how you EQ it depends on how you balance the mics as well. So it's kind of a movable feast depending on 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 what you need for the track. So there's the Sharp CMC pair on the front, the 57 pair on the back, then the single mono copper phone in the middle of the 57s, and then the the periscope just as a room option. So, which I may or may not use depending on what I'm doing. I, the piano often ends up in the booth actually. Um, and suits kind of a tight sound as well, but it's nice having it in the room where possible. This is a recording. I think it was one of my grandparents or great grandparents, and then it was it belonged to my dad, and he. He had it in a top floor flat somewhere in Partick. So it's been it's been with me. This is the third studio space that's been with me now. I guess I kind of most of the things I do on this piano I've come across by accident, to be quite honest. So um, I I discovered early on that a pair of SM57s on the back of the piano was actually one of the best ways of recording it, which I was quite surprised at. So I set up to record that and I put the shirts on the front just as a kind of backup. I think I stuck them through the distressors and put them really kind of heavy compression and I remember on that session being completely surprised by the sound I was able to get from the front mics and then that ended up becoming the main sound that I got and then I've gravitated back to the 57s again and so I tend these days just to have a mixture of everything on there so that we've got all the options covered. And the copper phone is the kind of wild card mic as well as um, on the back. It's certainly not subtle and it's not the compressor's not set the way you would tend to dial a compressor in, you know, as in it's, you know, if you if you put it close to a drum kit, it's almost too clippy, but then that sound with the kind of really spiky transients um, and the kind of long sustain, just the way the attack and the release is, it's actually quite useful blended in and it can add a whole load to a drum kit, but you kind of do have to, it's almost too much kind of close up depending on, on how you're using it, but. I definitely find it handy on the piano and on acoustic guitars and stuff as well, so. Looks pretty good to me. It's about how it sounds really, isn't it? So, great, and then the scope, let's have a look. I've got this guy up here. So we're just gonna point in the general direction at the moment and then we'll start there and we might move depending on how the phase relates. Okay. I think that's us. Should we go through and we'll have a look at the patch and get everything kind of set next door? Um, so I've got the Sharp CMC f uh, with the cardioid, so the CMC6 with the Mark IV cardioid capsules, they're on the front of the piano. Uh, so I've got them coming in two channels here and I've got the distressors on the insert there uh, for that kind of squashed thing that I, I was saying I discovered by accident. <laughs> Uh, then I've got the 57s on the back of the piano. Um, decided to put them through the, the Zener limiter and the curve bender today. I um, probably won't be very heavy with the Zener limiter, it'll just be a little bit of colour. I don't tend to compress those as hard, it's more about the kind of glassy attack, I think is the best way of describing how the 57s sound. Um, and it's nice to be able to give them quite a lot of air, even if it does bring up a bit of noise. I can always deal with that afterwards, but I'll do that with the Zener probably. Um, and then we've got the copper phone, which is going to go through the vac rack, just for fun. And uh, then the scope, the periscope, um, doesn't need anything because it's got its own built-in compressor. So it's just going to come straight in and maybe a bit of desk EQ on the way through. I'm a big fan of kind of routing everything through the desk for tracking sessions, um, for workflow as much as anything else, to be quite honest, just in terms of having your kind of your signal flow really clear, being able to patch your insert in and out and even managing the patch is not a spaghetti because everything is running into the, the, the line inputs of the console or the preamp inputs in this case and then you've got your inserts kind of patched from there. So it definitely is much easier than working without a desk I find. So, so. Can you go with the soft pedal down for me? I tend to use this piano almost um, completely, kind of consistently with the soft pedal, I have to say. It's like it, 
it's like another built-in compressor almost to the sound it just adds this lovely sort of velvetiness so that's generally where I start so there's the CMC's on their own just punch in the distressors desk EQ on them as well so Sevens. Let's see. top end okay and we're going into the curve the Zener first so let's see so that's just the 57s on their own which is way more of a full sound than you'd expect for those mics. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just going to play a little bit if you want to jump in and just man the record and um, I'll probably just play for half a minute or something, get a wee idea of the sound come through and maybe make a few tweaks, so... Okay, I'll have a quick listen next door, just to get an idea of how this is sounding. Let's see what we need to do. So, it kind of depends on the track, whether you want more of the front or the back mics, do you know? Um, for a brighter, poppier thing, I would use way more of the 57s. For this kind of more indie thing, 
I've kind of just, it suddenly made sense to me as soon as I pulled the 57s down by about 8 dB. Yeah, I'll just put a wee bit of spring. Yeah. Do you ever use the piano as a reverb? Uh, I haven't, but I've thought about it, I have to say. I, the the idea of like putting a brick on the sustain pedal when recording drums has been running around my brain, but never ended up having time to do it. But I think it would be fun. Um, Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that. Check out this video, or this video, or maybe even this video. And if you liked what you saw today, click on the subscribe button and ring the bell to hear more about recordproduction.com video releases. Uh, it's been used on a number of albums, basically, until we got the second piano and started having an option. It's been pretty much everything that I've done for the last 10, 12 years, so it's appeared there's a really great album by Georgia Cecile, actually, which this is all over. Uh, brilliant piano player, Ewan Stevenson, playing on that. Um, it's been... I think it's been on some Trash Can Sinatra stuff. It's been on... I can't remember. I think it might have made it onto some Run Rig stuff. I can't remember if it did or not in the end. <laughs> various various projects all over the, all over the spectrum, really.